good morning good morning good morning everyone good morning welcome to the aroma of prayer with your own dr tanya williams good morning to you children of the most high god and heirs and joint heirs with christ we have the righteousness of god and the evil one touches us not for every sickness and disease that comes near our bodies that touches our bodies every affliction every infirmity that comes near our body and touches our body dies instantly in the name of the lord jesus christ good morning to you and welcome 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 to the aroma of prayer with your own dr tanya williams grateful for another day in the land of the living happy 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 friday to each and every one of you that counted not robbery to be with me this morning but truly, I'm excited about what God is doing in this season and what God is doing in this hour. The Bible declares the steps of a good man. They're ordered by the Lord. And we're grateful that the Lord is ordering our steps this day. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I said it already, but let's say our declaration again. Uh, we are children of the Most High God. We are heirs and joint heirs with Christ. We have the righteousness of God. And the evil one touches us not every sickness and disease that comes near our bodies that touches our bodies uh, dies instantly in the name of the lord jesus christ we have the favor of god and the favor of the lord surrounds us like a shield when people see us all they see is the favor of god upon our lives and they do for us why because of god's favor because he goes before us and makes every crooked place straight he hews down every mountain he elevates every valley he gives us the hidden treasure in secret places and we decree and declare that we will walk in divine health we will live we will live according to the word of god and i'm just excited about what god is doing in this hour and doing in this time so good morning to each and every one of you i'm just grateful for our opportunity to come today to just give our father praise to give him glory to give him honor because great things that the Lord is doing in this hour. And what, what the songwriter said, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. And we're just so grateful that the Lord has not forgot about his children. He is moving on the behalf of his children. And we're grateful for that opportunity today. You know, there we, we sometimes, you know, the songwriter says, when I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I have a testimony. Great. Yes, yes. We have a testimony of all the things that the Lord has brought us through and brought us out. We have a testimony and we're just so excited. The testimony of many that are overcomers. The songwriter says, how I got over, my soul looks back and wonder how I got over. And I'm grateful this day for what the Lord is doing. I'm grateful for the many testimonies that we are receiving uh that they're coming out of the fire they're coming out of affliction they're coming out of sicknesses they're coming out of diseases and i want to tell you intercessors keep on praying keep on seeking keep on calling because the lord is hearing our prayer that's right the lord is hearing our prayer and i want to um uh congratulate um my uh uh, Rose, she does a lot of my, um, she does a lot of my social media. So be, be a little quiet now. Doc has to do her social media now. But uh, we want to congratulate Rose. She had a little girl yesterday. She had a little girl yesterday. You know, for some of you that did, that did know she was expecting. And some of you that didn't know she was expecting. She had a little girl yesterday. And of course, her name is Rose. She named her after her. And so let's give her a big, uh, a big congratulations. We get an opportunity. Um, you know, inbox, uh, reach out to her. A, a, a lot of you know her. Uh, those of you that go that go to the um, intercessory prayer summit, she's usually doing our social media area. She usually have the mic in her hand, taking interviews and working. So uh, we we'll just want to congratulate both her and her her husband. Uh, they have a little girl. She has two boys now, so now she has a little girl. So we're just excited about what God is doing for her in this hour so we have a, a little a, 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 a little one that's added that's added to the team and I'm just so grateful for that and I'm grateful my 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 couple 
my couple, my my couple from my power gathering, um, Julius and Tanya, they celebrated an anniversary. I believe it was yesterday. I saw it on the on the um on the um on the on the Facebook social media. I was up three o'clock in the morning. And I saw it. So I want to wish you, if you're on the line, wish you a, a happy happy anniversary. And for the many <clears throat> that have been having birthdays uh the, the last couple of weeks, I want to wish you a happy happy birthday. Uh, the mid so many of you, you've just been so faithful to to um the um to to the aroma of prayer and things that I'm doing and I'm just so grateful and I yeah I don't know if I if I've said it but you probably already have known it there will not <laughs> there will not be an intercessory prayer prayer summit this year because of everything that's going on but uh, once things hopefully gets back to our new to our to to our new normal and um, we're able to gather I probably will maybe do a prayer gathering or something at the end of the year just something local. So I just want to just let you guys know. And um, I was thinking about doing something virtual, but you know us. We the laying out, running, falling out on the floor, being slain people. So um, but I'll definitely have something there. Uh, also, too, uh, it's just really been a blessing. Uh, <clears throat> for those of you who definitely would like to stay connected, we are meeting. I mean, the Lord just have me working now. Oh, my God. Uh, I feel like what Michael Jackson got me working, working day and night. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, you can join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, we have the Aroma of Prayer every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Aroma Prayer. It, aroma Prayer can be caught via uh, Facebook Live for those of you that are listening to me now on my personal page as well as my other pages. I share it to my main page, my Keeping a Momentum page, my Power Gathering page, my Lisa Living Water page, all over the place. So uh, you can, um, and then those of you, those, those sessions that you are on that bless you, those those sessions that you are on that bless you, uh, you can, um, you can, um, you can share it. And um, it's been a blessing. Many people that I don't even know have been reaching out to me. They're like, Dr. Williams, you know, somebody shared your, your aroma prayer and I needed it. The season of uncertainty, you know, um, just uh, be anxious for nothing. Because many people are going are going through, you know, many people are going through. And because they're going through, they need the word of encouragement. So if there is a aroma prayer that has blessed you, please share it. There might be somebody that needs that word at that hour to bless them so monday wednesday friday we have the aroma of prayer 6 30 a.m and then on saturdays we have a double header we have seven o'clock a.m keeping a momentum which i am teaching on intercessory prayer so if anybody is interested in intercessory prayer intercession i've been teaching um last couple of weeks on keeping the momentum about prayer come and join us and then at 10 a.m my my my, my weekly service with, with my with my group um is called the power gathering the power gathering we have our own personal page that's our church we have our own personal page if you're interested in being and being part of that group you can just come and uh i'll put i'll, I'll put the links on my main page i'll put the look links on my tanya williams page after um after the call today you can click it and ask to join it and uh, you can be more than be more we, we 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 would love to have you we usually meet uh in a church in elmont uh every saturday at 10 a.m but we're still we're still meeting and we're still being fed and we still have in church amen we're still having church so you can be a part of our power gathering we meet every saturday at 10 a.m and then this sunday i'm gonna do it again uh sunday 9 a.m and i'll just have church while um we are uh quarantine quarantine join me from my main page from my tanya williams page join me and we will have 9 a.m service 9 a.m service on sunday 9 a.m last week we had a resurrection morning we had a good time in the holy ghost my topic was it's time to arise and so we going to see what the lord has to say so those of you that are interested you can come join me sunday 9 9 a.m saturday 7 a.m now 7 a.m uh that one streams from truelife radio.net 
that true streets from true life radio but the live is shared to my main page and i have a group called keeping keeping up momentum of prayer so you can come and join that also to those of you i've been putting prayer prayer nuggets out there prayer prayer nuggets out there call the prayer watch many of you i saw you've been enjoying them they've been encouraging you they've been strengthening you and that's the purpose of it for them to strengthen your 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 intercession and your watchman anointing because we are on a watch right now we are on a prayer we're watching as well as praying so you can uh every every morning uh you can find all the nuggets in my keeping the momentum uh group if you want to be a part of that or all you have to do is ask to join and um and I try in the morning. I try to share it to my to my main page. I try not to put too much on my main page because there's a lot going on. So that's why. But well, Doctor Williams, you have all these separate pages. Yeah, because I have a lot going on. So if you're looking just for the prayer, the prayer watch, you can go to Keep It On Momentum. It's nice there, clean. You can see everything. My page has got a lot going on, and sometimes people can't find it. And every oh, Doc, I can't find uh, uh, day nine or day eight. Just go to Keep It On Momentum. Everything is there. It'll be easier for you for you to find it. So um, you can do that. And then I've been teaching a class called Releasing Living Waters. It's been absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. We, we had class last night and we're meeting Mondays and Thursday. Mondays and Thursday from 7 to 9 p.m. Monday to Thursday from 7 to 9 to, to, to 9 to 9 p.m. And we've been having a good time in the Holy Ghost. If you're interested, we've actually just finished class, class number three. But the classes are recorded. If you want to go listen to them, catch up on the homework and stuff and be a part of the class. And I do a teach for about an hour and a half. And then the last half an hour, I open up the class. I open up the class for, um, I open up the class for uh, questions and 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 any you know answers and any level of um uh um clarity that is needed so you have me live on the line and i mark the homeworks and give them back so if you are interested it's still it's still time to join actually i'm gonna close it after this weekend because uh you're, well we're not we're not well it's eight it's eight sessions so uh, Monday makes the fourth fourth session. Then we're halfway through, and it'll be too much. But if you are interested, I've been teaching on discernment, spiritual giftings, re revelational giftings, hindsight, insight, foresight, and we started the prophetic intercession. The prophetic intercessors when the priest and the prophet co collide, and how and and how and how their anointings when it comes together burst forth the prophetic intercession, the one that has the ear and the heart of God that prays what's on the mind of God. So if you are interested, you know, during this time, many people are taking advantage of the um, time for teaching. So I'm going to be doing, again, the Releasing Living Waters. That's for the month of April. And I'm really praying I might, I might, I might do another class next month. We're going to see. But since we're quarantined, we might as well get built up and get, and get strengthened. And um, I see Trina's on the line. Trina, we're, we're pray, praying for you. Even though we weren't there physically with you on Wednesday, we were there in spirit, praying and covering you and and bringing you through, bringing you through this season. So we're we we definitely here for you. So, my um, what I wanted to teach on this morning, I tell you, the the, the Lord just kind of has me all not all over the place. I'm just really learning. That's another thing I taught last night in class about her learning how to flow learning how to flow and allowing the spirit of the lord to gently guide you to um to 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 be sensitive to his voice and and move accordingly to what to what he wants done in this hour and this time so this morning i want to talk about perseverance perseverance in prayer this is the time now that in spite of what's going on in spite of what we're dealing with in spite of <clears throat> in spite of the challenges that might be coming our way we got to persevere in prayer uh the bible tells us in in colossians chapter 2 i'm sorry colossians chapter 4 verse 2 through 4 the bible tells us continue steadfastly in prayer being watchful in it <clears throat> with thanksgiving at the same time pray also for us that god may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of christ that i may make it clear which is it's which 
that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. The Bible tells us continue steadfastly in prayer. Continue, continue steadfastly in prayer. Being watchful in it and thanksgiving. And at the same time, pray also for us. This is the hour now, children, that we have to be steadfast in our prayer time. We have to be steadfast in, in our times of intercession. We have to be steadfast. And <clears throat> I'm going to go to one prophetic intercessor and those of you that was in class last night and and you and I gave you the homework about name me three three prophetic intercessors so if you're listening right now you you, you you got one of your homeworks okay you uh, one of the people for your homework which is Elijah Elijah is is a prophetic intercessor and uh Elijah is one that had a level of perseverance in prayer, perseverance in prayer. James 5, 17 and 18 tells us, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth produces its fruit. See, we have to get to a point where we learn that we have to pray past, and this is something I shared last night too. I said, we have to pray past our feelings. We have to pray past our emotions and pray what God tells us to pray in this hour. We have to pray past our feelings, pray, pray past our emotions, and we have to pray what God is telling us to pray in this hour and be consistent to it. Be consistent to it. Because sometimes it doesn't always feel uh uh feel feel like we should but then again as i told you a few minutes ago prayer isn't about feeling prayer isn't about emotion prayer pr prayer is our assignment well dr williams you know prayer has feeling in it and it has emotion in it yes but your your prayer should not be led by your feelings your prayer should not be led by by your emotion because those that are led by the spirit they are the children of God. They are the sons of God. They are the daughters of Zion. We have to be led by the spirit of God when it comes to moving for things for God. Let me tell you something. There have been many times where people have reached out to me in prayer, or reached out to me when they were really going through sensitive matters and things like that. And if I allowed my emotions to take over, I probably would have hung the phone up. Because of the way you handled me, the way you talked to me, the way you treated me, you you. And, but yet that I can't, I cannot allow my feelings and my emotions to 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 move me out of my assignment. Because if I'm called to be a crisis intercessor, if I'm called to be an EMT in the spirit, then I got to put all that stuff to the side and I have to be diligent to my assignment. That's just like if you call the ambulance, say a family member or someone is, is sick, you call the ambulance. And when the EMT gets there, the, the EMT realize the person that is sick at that moment is their, is their arch enemy. They have an obligation to take care of that individual no matter what the situation is, no matter how they feel about the person, they took an oath to help. See, it's the same way intercessors. It's just not the people that you want to pray for. It's just not the people that you want to intercede for. It's not the people that, that you are goody-goody and buddy-buddy with. Sometimes as you're in prayer, the Lord's going to show you people that you know that, that, that know did you wrong, that know that, that you know did you down and dirty. But you got to learn how to be consistent and be obedient to what God is calling you to do and God is calling you to do what? Pray. Pers perseverance in prayer. Time and time again, we are we 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 bring our requests before the Lord, and yet sometimes it seems that nothing changes. So, what do we do then? If you are like most people, you will be tempted to just give up. But God, but God doesn't want us to um do that. When we don't see immediate answers to our prayers, we tend to want to give up. That's when we need perseverance. And again, and I and I talk about perseverance. I talk about perseverance with the level of consistency we have to be consistent and when we are consistent we got to learn how to push past 
what we feel, push past what we see. And sometimes pushing past, think, you know, praying, but well, God, you know, I'm praying and praying and praying and it seems like nothing is happening. But let me tell you something. The Lord does hear the cries of his people uh, and God will send an answer. He will send an answer. We got to learn how to push past what, 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 what's going on around us and, and, and go and go forth in the things of God. See, effective praying is like running a race. Endurance is the key. Endurance is the key. The Bible tells us what? Matthew 7 and 7. Ask and it will be given to us. Seek and we will find. Knock and it will be opened unto us. We got to know in the asking, the seeking, and the knocking, that's a level of per per perseverance. You got to keep on enduring. You got to keep on going when it seems like nothing is going on. You got to keep on doing and, and moving and shifting. Why? Because eventually in the end, something is going to happen. Perseverance is holding on and never giving up even in the face of opposition and even apparent failure how many times have we done things and it seemed like it just didn't work out i, I remember you know I, I i love to cook and what one of my girlfriends she called me the other day and she's like i know you're cooking up a storm over there i know you got those pots burning i said yes and no I said, nope, I'm only cooking enough for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I said, nope, I'm not cooking all that heavy food because, I mean, I could have this place smoking. But I said, nope, I'm not doing that because in the final analysis, in, 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 in the final analysis, mm -mm, I don't have time for that because when we come out of this quarantine, all of us is going to be going back to the gym. <laughs> and I said, no, no, no. I said, in the morning, I, I'm, I said, I told my girlfriend, I said, starting Sunday morning, I have, I have my workout routine. I said, I'm working, I'm, I'm working it out. I'm going to my basement. And I'm going to be working out me and the cat. We gonna be, we gonna be working out. He gonna be jumping because he gonna see me jumping. We gonna be working it out because I said I'm not. Uh uh. No, the devil is a liar. <laughs> no no no. That's why some of y'all, you know, I talked to some of y'all. Now I told you guys before I had to deal with the with the uh Teddy Graham demon. I was sitting here working one day and open up a box of Teddy Graham and when I look, I was I was I, I was eat I was eating the bottom of the box. I was eating the crumbs. I said, Oh no, no, no. And he, he got me with a bag of Teddy. He got me with a box of Teddy Graham. He got me with a bag of wavy potato chips. He got me with a couple different things. I said, No, no, no. I will not be ignorant to Satan's devices. So we have to be in a season, in a season now, we have to be sensitive to the things that we're, um, we're, that we're dealing with. Anybody knows what I'm talking about with these, with these, with these quarantine snacks? We gotta be very careful. But let me go back to my teach. So perseverance is what is holding on and never giving up, even in the face of opposition and even apparent failure. There's gonna be times where things aren't gonna be perfect. There's gonna be times where you are going to make a mistake. I was talking about food, yeah. So um, there's time, you know, like I can cook now, but there was a time where I was exper I, I was experimenting. Um, you know, or sometimes you're trying to do these new um uh um dishes you watch you, you watch the cooking channel you go online you see some oh that there looks good and you might not have one of the ingredients that they have so you try to substitute and your substitution doesn't work yeah so you know sometimes you do have some epic fails i'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell no story you do have some epic fails you throw it out and you start all over again but it doesn't stop me from still from from still pursuing what i need to do See, understand this, that in this hour of perseverance, especially in, in prayer, perseverance is a mark of faith. It, it says, you know, well, God, I trust you in the midst of everything that's going on. I trust you in the midst of, even though things might seem challenging right now, I still believe that you can do what you say that you can do. Perseverance is focused, is being focused. It is concentrated on the object of prayer. Is concentrated on the object of prayer. What are you focused on this morning? What what is the thing that you that you now have have your mind and your heart towards as you are in a level of intercession and prayer? See, it is continually um, uh, when we in per, uh, when when we're in persevering prayer, it's, it's systematic. It is unyielding for it never gives up. It's patient because it waits for an answer. Children of God, we gotta learn how to wait for an answer. Jesus wants us to be persistent. We gotta learn how to wait for an answer. You know, sometimes that big W, 
that big W, that 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 waiting. Sometimes that it just throws many of us just out the door. We just just get just get fatigued. We just get tired. But we gotta learn how to wait in the midst of the uh in in the midst of our prayer time, in the midst of our seeking, in the midst of our calling on God. And first in First Kings, chapter. 18 verse 42 through 44 King James version another another familiar uh scripture that many of you um have heard <clears throat> so the bible says so Ahab went up to eat and to drink and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said to his servant go up now look towards the sea and he went up and looked and said there is nothing and he said go again seven times and it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, <clears throat> say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariots and get thee down from the rain. Stop thee not. We have to understand now that Elijah was one of perseverance. He didn't stop until the rain came. He didn't stop interceding until the rain came. Even though the servant was going back and saying, I don't see anything. He kept telling him, go back again, go back again. But it did not change Elijah's posture of prayer. It did, it did not change his positioning. It did not cause him to get up and say, well, God's not going to do it. He heard a word from God and he knew that the Lord told him that it was going to rain. And so he heard a sound. He said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Many of you are hearing God's voice. You're hearing him in this hour telling you what he's going to do, what what he what he has planned in this hour. And many, uh, many are being challenged and many are, are going to and fro because it doesn't look like it. But God gave you a word. And because God gave you a word, I want you to position and I want you to posture yourself in a level of prayer, in a level of intercession. For there, for there, for there have been many. I've been getting calls and people said, well, I was listening to this prophet and I was listening to that prophet. And this prophet is saying this is going to happen. And that prophet is saying that's going to happen. And I'm scared and I'm fearful and I am confused. And I tell you right now, God is not the God of confusion. He's not the God of them confusion. What I need you to do is stop, drop, and roll. I need you to stop. Again, this is the hour that you got to close your, you, your, your, you got to guard, not close. You have to guard your ear gate. You have to guard your eye gate. You have to guard your mind gate. You have to guard your mouth gate. You got to guard your spiritual gate. And you got to guard your heart gate. You cannot allow anything and everything to come in. And understand in, in this hour that when it's the spirit of the Lord speaking, it's going to bear witness with the spirit of God on the inside of you. Because God, because God and his spirit, they are one. God and his spirit, they, they are one. And understand no matter what might come these next couple of weeks or even these next couple of months, we know one thing, God is in control. We know one thing that the power of the Lord said that he would never leave us, nor, nor would he forsake us. And he said that he would take care of his own. The righteous will never be forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. And we got to stand in agreement no matter what it might look. People, some people are prophesying there's going to be a famine in the land and there's not going to be no food. There's not going to be no water and people going crazy. No, 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 no. The, the, the righteous will not be forsaken nor his seed begging for bread, nor his seed begging for bread. I, I truly believe, I truly believe, let's go back to the Bible. I truly believe that before the time of famine, there was a time of plenty. And what, and what did the Lord did? He raised up those that had an ear to hear, to store up, to store up, to make sure that they had, not only did they have, but they had more than enough that when the time of famine came, they they would be able to eat and others would be able to eat to eat also. I truly believe in this hour that if it really got down to that point that the Lord would have already had us preparing and storing up. The prophets would have been speaking. The prophets would have been decreeing and take, declaring in the land what, what needs to be done. And we would have been preparing ourselves. I This is the hour now, children, that you got to hear God. This is that. And I, I tell the many of you that 
that um, follow follow my ministry and follow what God has, has spoken in this hour. We have to know we got to hear God. It's wonderful to hear from this one and that one, but we need to hear God. And my prayer is, Lord, sensitize the ears of your people that they may be able to hear you and hear you clearly. We want to be a people that can hear God and hear the Lord clearly. We don't want to be ones that's all that's all over the place, listening to this one and listening to that one. What is God saying? What is God saying, children of God? What is God saying in this hour? Everybody has a revelation of what of, of, of what's going on during this uh, during this pandemic. You know, some believe it's the judgment of God. Some believe God is trying to get our attention. What is God saying to you? What is God saying? There's time, children. You got to get out the bed, get get on the floor, get face down on your face, and 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 seek God until the Lord speaks to you. He desires to speak to you. Remember, prayer is two way communication. You got to understand, giving God, you speaking to God, but giving the Father an opportunity to speak back to you. And the Bible declares that wherever we will find ourselves in, even though there might be craziness all around. There's thousands of people leaving uh, leaving this earth. Uh, there's things that's going on. But one thing he says, wherever we find ourselves in, we should be content. Uh, why? Because we are content in his word. The Bible declares heaven and earth will pass away, but his word, his word, that's the thing that we can stand on. That's the, that's the thing that we can hold on to. His word will stand for. He is the anchor that we hold on to in this hour. Many people have an opinion. Many people feel what <clears throat> this is what's going on and that and that is what's going on. But that's why we got to get to back to a place of prayer. We got to get back to a place of, of intercession because prayer is a habit that needs to be cultivated. You just don't pray because people tell you to pray. You pray because you should have a desire to pray, that you should have a heart to pray. And it's a discipline. It's a discipline that needs to be developed. In this hour, we had so many distractions going on before. Now you're home, you're quiet, develop your time of prayer, to develop that discipline time of prayer. It is something that needs to be practiced. Uh huh. I don't want to even use the word practice. I say more cultivated. We need to cultivate our prayer time because Elijah was one that was persistent in prayer and he expected to hear an answer from God. When you go into prayer, when you go into intercession, uh, when you go into that time, you got to know that you have to go in expectation. I'm going in expectation, believing God will speak to me. I'm going in expectation, going, knowing, that when I come into prayer, I'm expecting to hear an answer. Sometimes you got to put a demand on the spirit of God. You got to put a demand on the power of God. You got to put a demand on the anointing of God. See, it is this time and this time of effective prayer depends on our faith and our willingness to trust God's faithfulness in his promises. I've been teaching over the last couple of weeks since we've been in this pandemic, be anxious for nothing. Stop worrying. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop, stop having these anxiety attacks. See, God takes care of his own. He said, if you give me your anxiety, if you give me your worry, I will give you peace and I will give you rest. That's what he tells us to cast out cares upon him. Why? Because he cares for us. The Lord cares for us. And because he cares for us, there is an expectation to know that the Lord will take care of his own. Stop worrying about tomorrow. Some of you, you might you might not be working. You're, you're fine. You're fine finances might be challenged right now who who knew a couple of weeks ago there would be a, st a, a, a stimulus check who knew that there would be extra money given in the pay in the paycheck but you do, let me tell you something the heart of the king is in the hands of god and he turns it as he does the waters in the stream they're making the, the doors are being open and God is taking care of his own. But we got to learn how to stand on the promises. Uh, we got to learn how to walk by faith. Uh, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, for all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Uh, every now and then when the enemy tries to come in like a flood, you got to decree over your life, there is a promise over my head. Uh huh. And I'm going to live to see the manifestation 
manifestation of the promises that God has spoken over my head. And then you got to understand that faith. Uh, Faith, 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 faith is the charger. Huh? It's the charging station uh, that when you start to get, get, get low, you got to hold on to the faith. Uh, the Bible tells us, uh, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. See, when we come to God, we got to come to God in faith, believing that what he says he can do who he is and what and what he can accomplish that he's able to do it but we got to seek him we got to seek him we got to get in that level of perseverance in prayer you know there's times that first for, for, for first few times you go and it seems like nothing is happening but honey keep on keep on praying keep on praying because sure enough things are going to happen. See, faith is necessary for effective prayer. See, the Bible says, so Jesus answered them and said to them, assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. And what things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. See what, and what things you ask in what prayer and what things you ask in what prayer and what things you ask in what prayer, believing and you will receive. See, this is the time now, children, we got to get back between the porch and the altar. We got to get back to prayer. You know, many a times we're, we're, we're home and <clears throat> we're, we're on social media and we're watching this one pray and we watching that one pray and we're watching this one preach and we're watching this one teach but when's the last time you opened up your mouth and prayed when when's the last time you you became the gap stander bringing the problem to the answer and the answer to the problem when's the last time that you cried out for the city that you cried out for the nation that you cried out for the people god wants to hear your voice god wants to hear your voice because there is a sound that resounds out of you a sound that comes out of your spirit uh, as a level of intercession uh, and, a, and a level of, of, of the supplicant, the prayer warrior, that as you decree and declare and you start to pray in the atmosphere, things will start to happen. See, Elijah was effective in prayer because he did what? He believed. When we go into prayer, we must believe. We must believe. We must believe. But Dr. Williams, I was believing God for something and it didn't happen. See, we have to understand that when we are connected to, to, to the father, we, we believe by faith, knowing that Lord, what your will is concerning the situation, Lord, show me your will concerning this situation. Show me, sh show me which way and how you're going to move. And if you are connected with the Lord, he will allow your prayers to flow according to his will. He, he will allow his prayer. He, he will allow your prayers to flow according to, 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 to his will. So understand that when you are in a season of persevering prayer, just like Elijah, Elijah believed God and God moved. You have, we have to get to a point where we believe God and watch God move. See, an answer to prayer may not come as we want or as we expect. Again, it has to do with the will of God. I told you the other day, I was praying and the, and the Holy Ghost cut me down. He said, it's not, it's not what you want. It's my will for the situation. And I humbled myself and I said, yes, Lord. I said, God, whatever your will is for the situation, I might desire one thing, but Lord, whatever your will is, uh, I say yes to your will. Uh, I say yes to your way. Uh, I say, yes, I will obey. Uh, there's some things we might not understand, uh, but we know one thing that God is in control. Yes, he is. And God is in control. And so not only when we're praying, it might not go the way we want it to go, but but Lord, let your will be done uh, and let your glory be revealed. Uh, we need to be consistent uh, and persistent uh, in our prayer time. Uh, we can't give up, children. Uh, we can't give up uh, and we can't give in. Uh, the Bible says in Luke 11, 5, 5 through 10, it says that Jesus even taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer. And he said to them, which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine has come to me on his journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, do not trouble me. The door is now shut and my children are are are." 
and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be open. See, we got to understand that God has promised to answer our prayer. But there's times we got to be consistent in it. There's times we got to be per persistent in it. Again, he might not answer it the way that we want to an- want him to answer it, but he is a prayer answering God. He is a prayer answering God. And, and, and as we go and as we seek the Lord, uh, we got to understand that uh, it's all about connection. Uh, when we connect with God in our prayers uh, and believe that he hears our prayers uh, and he hears every word of our prayer, then we have the confidence just like Elijah when he prayed. The Bible says when Elijah told Ahab that there was a sound of abundance of rain, there had, a, there had as yet been no sound audible to the human ear. Elijah had only heard this sign sound by hearing of faith. Many of you, we got we, we need our, our faith to be connected to our hearing. What is God saying in this hour? What is God telling us to do in this hour? And we got to pray accordingly. We have to pray accordingly. Many, many, well, we're going to be quarantined for the next three months, six months, a whole year. What is God saying? What does God say? And once God speaks, you pray what God is putting in your heart to, 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 to pray in this hour. See, too, too many times we're getting caught up in man's opinion. We're getting caught up in, man, in man's opinion instead of, instead of hearing what God is saying. I want to share something from my class that I taught the, the other night. And, um, and that's why in this hour we need that level of discernment. And I had taught in the class that discernment acts as a means of protection, guarding us from being deceived spiritually. There are many voices in the land, children. There are many voices in the land. That's why one of the prayers I constantly tell the people of God, we need to pray for discernment. We need to know good from evil, truth from error. Because many a times discernment acts as a, a means of protection. That we don't be ignorant to Satan's devices. That we don't fall into the traps of men. We don't fall, we don't fall into man's ideology. But we hear what God is saying in this hour. See, Discernment is the ability to diagnose the spiritual needs of others and able to penetrate into their heart issues. It can be the surgical scalpel and spiritual surgery that makes healing possible. And I'm not just talking about healing, but it's the time now that we we can be discernful, that we can be so sensitive that just like a surgeon scalpel, he goes in, he gets the infection, he pulls out what needs to be pulled out, and he closes it up. See, in a level of discernment, where we aren't ignorant to, 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 to Satan's devices. So when we go into prayer and we go in dis- the, with, with a discerning heart, when we're praying what's on the mind of God, when we're praying what's on the heart of God, we're not ignorant. We're going in hitting the mark. Too many of you, when you're going into prayer, you pray, you're praying amiss. You, your, 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 your prayers are hitting the ceiling, come back, slapping you in the face. But when you learn how to be a skilled surgeon in the spirit, huh? when you learn how to be skilled in prayer, huh? when you learn how to, how to level, have a level of strategy in the plan and in prayer, because strategy is all about a plan. So when you going into prayer, you're going into praying, you, 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 we're going into pr- pr- praying for our city. We're, we're praying for the people that we love. We're praying for the people that the Lord places on on our hearts to pray. And as we pray, we are being sensitive to the voice of God. See, Elijah heard something. He was already connected to the Father. So because he was connected to the Lord, the Lord, the Lord already told him what he was going to do. He said, I hear, he, he allowed them to hear the sound of the abundance of rain. So he knew it was going to rain because he already heard the sound. What are you hearing in the spirit that God is now saying position and posture yourself and birth it into the earth realm? 
What are you hearing in the spirit? What are you discerning in the spirit that God is saying, I need you to position yourself. I need you to posture yourself, honey, because many, if you have not known it, I'm going to say it, intercessors, we are the birth canal. We are the birth canal to the anointed. We are the birth canal uh, of, of this next revival. Uh, we are the birth canal to, to the next move of God. Uh, we are the birth canal because we got to get into a position and a posture of travail. Uh, and we need to pray the will of God in the earth. Uh, we need to pray the will of God in the earth. What is God saying? Uh, is your ear Oh, shock. Yes, God. Is your ear um, attached or is your ear on the heart of God? Uh, is your ear at the mouth of God? Uh, what is God saying? Uh, God needs you now to position yourself. Uh, he needs you now to posture yourself uh, and bring it into the earth realm. And bring it and bring it into the earth realm. And bring it into the earth realm. Just like a woman, when she's bringing that child through, she got to push. She has to put. If she's having a, a normal delivery, she has to push that baby out. Uh-huh. And, and sometimes it doesn't always feel good. But she got to be consistent and she has to be... Uh, persistent to bring it through in this hour children we got to be consistent and we got to be per, per persistent to bring this thing through right because there is a time now that god is waiting he's waiting for the children of god huh, to start to intercede and to cry out many people have been saying if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves in prayer yes we hear that but there's time now children huh, that we got to take the, the posture huh of travail and uh, we got to start to wail now uh, we start to we have to start to cry now uh, that's one of the things that the mothers uh, they they used to do uh, they used to go in and they used to get on the altar uh, and they would start to cry out and they would start to travail uh, until something happens uh, this is the hour now children that there's a cry that can change things uh, there's a cry uh, that can change the atmosphere uh, there's a try cry that can even lift the corner of the quarantine now, but we got to cry out now. Uh, there has to be a people uh, that we got to lay aside every weight. Uh, we got to lay aside everything uh, that the enemy will try to put on us uh, to hinder us in this hour and this season. And we got to cry. Uh, that song that Trina um, uh, sings, you hear the cries of my people uh, and send an answer. Uh, see that when we know children, that when we cry, an answer is coming. Uh, but we got to position ourselves uh, just like Elijah. He didn't move until the cloud showed up. Uh, children, you we can't move. We can't move. We can't move until the Lord blows this out to the sea. Uh, we can't move. We can't move uh, until 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 the Lord allows a vaccine to be to be made. We can't move. But in the time and in the hour, we're going to keep on praying. We're going to keep on seeking. Yeah, there might be things that keep going on, but we have to learn how to persevere in prayer. We got to learn how to persevere in prayer. Do you hear me, children? It's time now for us to persevere in prayer. As I started off this morning, I said what in Colossians 4 and 2. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it. This time now we have to be consistent in our prayer time. I'm not saying, oh, we walk around 24-7 speaking in tongues and calling on God, but it's time now we have to be persistent in our prayer, in our prayer time. Because understanding and know if we keep on praying, if we keep on seeking, if we keep on calling, if we keep on crying, God is going to send an answer. Do you hear me? God is going to send an answer. But he needs you. He needs you intercessors. He needs you prayer warriors. He needs you supplicants. He needs you. God needs you. God needs you. Put your feelings to the side. Put your emotions to the side. There's going to be people that you're going to have to pray for. There's going to be people you have to intercede for that you know you that you that you know they didn't do you right. It's okay. You need to stay steadfast in this hour. Keep on praying because they're all children of God. And the Lord loves each and every one of us. And let me tell you something. The Bible says that he will make your enemies to even be your footstool. But if the man's ways please the Lord, 
See, this is the hour now. Our faith is under fire. I keep saying that every time I, I come on the line. Our faith is under fire. And just because our faith is under fire, you're not going to allow the enemy to take a fire extinguisher and put your faith out. Mm -mm. This is the time now for your faith to arise. Understand this, no matter where we might find ourselves in right now, God is still on the throne. He hasn't left his throne. He He's still there. God is still in control. There have been some hits that we've got over the last couple of weeks. Some of them might have hurt, and they hurt, and they hurt deeply. We we've lost some loved ones, and you know we've seen we've seen some things happen. We've seen people lose their jobs, and 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 all different kinds of things. We we've definitely seen. But I'll tell you one thing: God is still in control, and God takes care of His own. Do you hear me, children of God? God still takes care of all his own and God will still take care of you. But keep in that place of persevering in prayer. God hears the cries of his children. He hears the prayers of his children. And the Bible declares that we hold any type of iniquity in our heart. The Lord will not hear us. When you go into prayer, you make sure if you got to go to Psalm 51, Lord, create me a clean heart. Father, renew in me the right spirit. Anything that I've said, anything that I've done that has that has not been pleasing unto you, Father, cleanse me, purge me. But Lord God, I want my prayers to come up before you as a sweet smelling Savior in your nostrils. I want I want to be able to 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 touch heaven. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to touch heaven with my prayers. I want to be able to touch heaven with my intercession. So no matter what's going on right now, don't give up and don't give in. Stay on the prayer wall. Watchmen stay on the wall. Gatekeepers stay at the gate. This is the hour now of perseverance. This is the hour now of prayer. So I want each of you to be encouraged on, on um, today and just know that God is in control. He is in control and all things are working together for the good so again tomorrow join me 7 a.m we have keeping a momentum of prayer i'm teaching on intercession tomorrow 7 a.m and then we have our service at 10 a.m in the power gathering and then this sunday join me 9 a.m for our 9 a.m service and i want you to know one thing that in spite of what's going through going going on and some people might be talking gloom and doom just know one thing the eyes of the lord or upon the righteous and his ear is open unto his cry. Just know that God has you in mind. You are graven in the palm of his hand. You're the apple of his eye. And remember, God will take care of you. He took care of his people through the famine. He took care of his people through dark times. And he brought them out and brought them out with a strong hand. I decree and declare over your life this day that God will take care of you. That's his promise. That's his promise to his people. Continue to persevere in prayer. Your prayer is not falling on deaf ears. God will answer your prayer. So as you go forth today, be encouraged, be strengthened, and know one thing. As you go with God, God certainly will go with you. Have a blessed, a wonderful, and awesome day in Jesus' name. God bless you, everyone.